now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're very pleased to welcome back to the program Annette Whittemore, founder and president of the Whittemore Peterson Institute. Pleasure to have you here. Thank and you. And Dr. Judy Mikovits, who is a research director for that same organization. Pleasure to have you both on the program. Um, Annette. Can we just start out with just a really brief, simple explanation of what neuroimmune, uh, neuroimmune diseases are, including ME and CFS? Well, they're systemic diseases, and they impact both the nervous system and the immune system. Um, ME-CFS is a very, very complex disease, and we believe that it is infectious, that there are many organisms involved, and uh, that it's going to require quite a comprehensive set of treatments in order to bring about change. Um, the retrovirus XM, uh, XRMV that had shown up from research uh, on prostate cancer was found, according to your research, to be in the majority of tests done on folks not only suffering from ME-CFS but also prostate cancer, correct? Yes, correct, yes. And, 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 and what has been the result in terms of the worldwide reaction to this? Well, we've, we've had a, a really exciting year. We've had um, interactions with countries including Norway, Spain, Belgium, uh, uh, different groups throughout the U.S., in the Southeast and in the Northeast. Um, so many groups are into the research, excited about the research, and actually um, detecting XMRV in their patient populations. Um, Four papers were published this week in the journal Retrobiology, and according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, demonstrated according to the authors how easy it is for mouse contamination to skew lab tests involving XRM, uh, XMRV. I'm very excited about this to get this right. Um, <laughs> Uh, give us your thoughts on that and... and, and I'll let Judy okay. speak to that, definitely. Well, yes, I mean, uh, we've shown in the paper that we published last year and in a confirmation study um, done by uh, Harvey Alter and Shai Xing Lo at the NIH and FDA that, that it's necessary to um, do multiple different kinds of tests, that one, one single test um, won't um, give you clear detection of XMRV, and because it's so closely related to some mouse viruses, it's very important um, not to work in a mouse lab and to actually isolate the virus and show an immune response in the patients of the virus. So multiple tests are the way to detect the virus and we were well aware that it was, um, it was easy to have contamination potentially skew the results. Uh, were you surprised at the response to these papers? Um, I, I was. I thought that it was a well-concerted uh, effort by this group to make sure that uh, everyone knew about it prior to our being able to um, have a response, and we really weren't notified and given that opportunity. So we wanted to thank you for this opportunity, really, to be able to respond and to pretty much calm everybody down and let them understand that... Um, it really doesn't change the findings, it doesn't change the work that we've done whatsoever, and that we're moving forward in a very positive way. What do you think the motivation was behind this that they didn't contact you as you guys were the, the prime research center? Well, it's difficult to comment on the motivation of others, but um, I think uh, it, I think it is um, it is an attempt to make certain that um, you know maybe maybe that the, the the patients aren't aren't served and that XMRV is is not an important. I think there's a great fear about the public health risk of this virus um, in this disease and and in cancers. Okay, would you explain that a little bit uh, more deeply there? Mm -hmm. Well, if if our results and the confirmatory results um, that were published um, in August of this year um, hold true, as many as 20 million Americans could be infected with a new human retrovirus um, of uncertain pathogenic potential. That means you don't have to get sick, but you might. So as many as 20 million Americans, and that's 20 times the amount of HIV that was in this country um, it, at the height of the HIV epidemic in 1995. So I think there's a great concern for the public health, and that's why everything that's published about XMRV gets great attention each time. And um, one of the easiest ways for people to understand a retrovirus is AIDS, correct? 
That's a good example. And then there is another one, HTLV1. And, and um, certainly looking at those viruses, you can learn something. And they understand uh, the retroviruses and how they integrate and so forth. But this is a brand new family, um, never found before in human beings. And so um, I think there's a lot to be learned. And before we make any clear statements, we, we want to do the good, hard research. And um, we certainly, I, I am very, very proud of our group and the fact that they didn't take this, their first results, and simply go with those, but really looked very, very long and hard at this and took four different methods to just be absolutely sure they knew what they found. Whenever there's a discovery like this, and this is a huge discovery, yeah. and out of Reno, Nevada, which yeah. is uh, wonderful, mm -hmm. um, but there's always going to be a, a huge fight in the medical community when you have these kind of changes, correct? Oh, absolutely. There's, it's, it is a, a huge discovery, and as I said, of potential public health um, high, high significance. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always going to be um, a, a level of understanding. We all have to learn how to detect the virus, how, what to study. There's, there's just a lot of, um, that has to be learned. So there's always going to be a lot of pushback because, of course, um, the best science generally generates more questions than answers, and that's certainly what's happened here. Okay, let's take a break. More on this topic when we come back. To contact Nevada Newsmakers, call 775-857-2244 or go to nevadanewsmakers.com. Attention diabetics, if you've taken the diabetes drug Avandia, listen carefully. If a member of your family has suffered a heart attack, stroke, or even died while taking Avandia, call the attorney Greg Jones right now. If you or a loved one have taken this drug and were injured, you may be entitled to financial compensation. For a free legal consultation, call 800-595-6139. You don't owe us anything unless we're successful. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. I owed $50,000 in taxes, but listen. Your tax problem is settled. You only owe $8,400. What a great message. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, then you owe it to yourself to call this number. Let our experts help guide you through the process of negotiating a tax settlement. Call this number or go to tax10,000.com. It will be a short outing for this young right-hander as the manager heads to the mound. Uh-oh. I've never seen anything like this. There's an easier way inside local sports. Las Vegas Review Journal. Get inside. This segment is sponsored by the law firm of Lewis & Rocha, providing local and regional clients in-depth legal resources in today's challenging business climate. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Annette Whittemore and Dr. Judy Mikovits uh, from the Whittemore-Peterson Institute. Um, you and your researchers have published in the past uh, year that the reasons that other scientists around the world have had trouble recreating the results um, is that they're not doing the research in the same way. Why not? That, that just seems to be illogical. Why are they not doing the research in the same way? Well, uh, you know, sci scientists are, uh, um, usually do the things that they do well, and the advances that we've had in the past decade or so in molecular testing, that is um, high throughput, lots of samples, very quickly with an instrument to measure is it there or not, have really replaced the old-fashioned way of culturing. It's very difficult to culture virus, um, do an develop antibody testing, which we've done, and and, and it, it takes a lot of time and significant resources. So it, it, it's the hope and the, perhaps the bias of other researchers that since we can detect HIV with these nu what's called nucleic acid testing, we should be able to detect this virus. And, and that's just not the case at this point. It's too early in the discovery process. So we must do the labor intensive um, isolation of virus from the patients. And that's very difficult. I, I was just going to make one other comment. And, and I think it got 
glossed over in these last papers, but really what you're talking about are researchers at the NIH that have done this work, the Cleveland Clinic, the University of Utah, Cornell University, and the WPI. So there certainly are others out there that are very, very successful at this and are moving their research forward as well. So we're, we're lucky to have uh, those significant groups of researchers working on this. What's the role of politics in all of this? Well, <laughs> you know, um, there certainly is a lot of politics in medicine it's and science. It's a big deal. And um, I think whenever there is money, whenever there is prestige, whenever there is power, whenever there is change, um, there is going to be a lot of interest. And certainly in this case, there's a lot of money involved. Um, Basically, you have pharmaceutical companies, you have insurance companies, disability companies, you even have governmental health run, um, health, I'm sorry, government run healthcare systems, and they all have a stake in this. So it's going to create a massive change in the way things are done, the way these people are treated, and it's going to cost. And um, so I think the pushback right now very it can be related to political issues. Um, the blood supply around the world. I mean, I mean, people go in and give blood, uh, but they're not being tested for this at this point. Well, actually, um, or, that, or the, is that, that changing? They're, they're, it's, they're not being tested because we haven't been able to develop those tests. So the papers this week were trying, you know, were attempts to develop that high throughput, fast test that's needed to check the blood supply. You can't do it the way we do it right now. So um, what we've learned, we've been working with the um, National Institutes of Heart, Lung, and Blood, and the um, the, uh, the uh, various blood working group that was set up the day the paper was published last year and that we had a successful meeting at, uh, it's called the Blood Products Advisory Council last week in, in Bethesda, Maryland, and what was decided there and voted on was there was enough concern and enough data to suggest that CFS patients not donate blood, that until we can learn more, a question is asked, if you've ever had CFS, you're not permitted to give blood at this time. So in, in light of new di discoveries, um, we're erring on the side of caution and working very hard to develop those tests. Um, people can actually be tested for XMRV right now, correct? Yes, through they through can. the Institute. Yes. And they just get a hold of the Institute through your website? Um, actually, the, the clinical laboratory is called VIPDX, and they can go to that website and learn more about the test. So ours is a research lab at the WPI, and we the clinical laboratory is getting ready to open in the WPI, but we're not yet set up. So VIPDX is the current laboratory, and they are doing testing. If a physician orders that test for a patient, they will get that test. Yeah, and we culture virus and determine if the patient has an antibody to the virus, and that is the gold standard assay. It takes time, it may be as long as 45 days, so, but we're not in a hurry. The, the key is to get the answer right. Um, since the Institute opened earlier this year, mm -hmm. um, how have the functions of the Institute been going? And it's based on the campus of the uh, University of Nevada. It is. We're very, very excited. It took a little bit longer to get in than we had thought initially, but we're in. Uh, we've, we're up and running. Uh, we have been working very, very closely with a physician who came to town uh, for an entire week this past week to help us set up the medical practice. Meanwhile, you know, getting all the instrumentation up and running in the research laboratory um, has taken some time. That's all going smoothly now. and. Uh, so we're very excited, and uh, anyone that wants to come by certainly can come by and see what's happening there, and um, we're very, very proud of it. We're certainly excited to have all of the pieces in one home. So, so I guess bottom line from this entire discussion today is uh, for people not to panic that, that things are still moving forward, uh, mm -hmm. that nothing has changed, it's just that there are differing opinions. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. As one would expect, and this is really a great time of hope because we've also determined in our research this year, and that'll be coming out published very soon, um, we're, we're understanding why the virus hurts the immune system. We're understanding what's going wrong to make you sick, and that's another first step in order to, um, you know, get, just start making people well. So it's really a great time of uh, excitement and, and research around the world, and, and we, expect, we expect treatments next year. 2011. Can't yes. wait. All right. Thank, thank you, you, ladies, both for being here. We really appreciate it. More to come on this topic. We'll be right back in about newsmakers after this timeout.
The Tamarack Junction is South Reno's headquarters for football. Watch your favorite pro and college games in Sully Sports Bar 